second, I'm pulling up the chat as well. Hey, Ivan. Yes. Um, this is Danielle. I had a question about um, trying to hook up to Facebook with our, using our team's Facebook page. And we've been having a problem. Marvin and I have been trying to do that and it's, um, it doesn't work. Uh, what doesn't work? Well, I, you know, when I try to connect to the Location DFW Facebook page, I can't do it. Like it, well, it just says I don't have any connected, any accounts connected and it wants me to create a business page of my own. But mm -hmm. I kind of want to connect with on the team page. Okay. And we're stumped because we can't figure it out. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, let me take a look at that because I know Marvin came up to me with that a while back and I think oh. Eddie and I took a look at that. Okay, good. I'm supposed to meet um, him too. So if you met with him already, I will, uh, he'll, I'll just talk with him and he'll know. I haven't talked to him in about a week. Uh, well, it was actually a couple months ago. Uh, is Eddie on the call? Is he here? Uh, no, no, he's not. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's it's basically the same way that you would hook up your account. Um, and I can go over that here at the end. Um, okay. But I believe today we're talking about some of the new features that were on command. So if you haven't logged in in, um, in the last couple months, so some of these things will be new to you. And I actually have a list on my phone of all the things that are um, that have been changed during that time. So are you guys ready to get started? Yes, sir. Yep. Ivan, will you mm -hmm. will you send out that list to us of the features? I know you're going to walk through them, mm -hmm. but would you mind sending that out or yep. communicating those lists, I mean, those uh, new features to us? Yes. Um, so that actually brings me up to, to our first point. So you guys see my dashboard right now, right? With uh, there's no tasks. There, here's the playbook. Here's the design updates, right? Yeah. yeah. Goals versus actual. So if you scroll down, um, it says product updates right here. Yep. Down here, you can see all of the week's updates um, every single week that they have those, right? And if you're up to date, then you can, because um, it looks like it only stores two weeks worth of updates, but you can kind of get a little bit of a glimpse through this. Um, and then this is kind of a text that Eddie, um, Eddie and I compiled to, uh, to have that as well. So it's not like a set list or anything. Um, right. But the first thing on here is the fact that you can change all of this around, right? So if you don't want any of these um, any of these features, or you don't want the notepad, or you don't want any of the leads, you can click on customize home, and you can actually select which um, actually select which icons appear on the home page, right? So if you only really care about um, is that your what you have to do today, right? Your tasks, wh where your goals are versus your actual and you don't really care about design updates you don't care about the health score the notepad you care about the leads and the lead notifications and you don't really care about the playbook you can also change these around on here as well so in what order they come in right so if you wanted the first thing you want to see is tasks uh that you can set tasks up at the top uh let me just make that go up. yeah and then you want to see your goals and you want to see your leads right and you hit apply and this is your new format that, that you look at right so if you don't want to look at anything else besides the, the things that are most important to you, then this is the way that you would, uh, you, you can customize your home page, right? And the more that command gets flushed out, the more the features, the more features get added, uh, the more things that you can see on your, on your home dashboard. So this is very cool, very neat. Uh, again, this is customizable to each individual agent and to, to whatever their needs are um, throughout, throughout the, uh, throughout the process. I know for, for later, they'll be able to have custom home um, presets, kind of like you have filters to where if, for example, you're only doing phone calls today, you might only want to see your um, your database or your goals, and you might want only want to see your leads, right? If you're doing a top-down business type of view, maybe you'll just have your goals and your actuals. Uh, maybe you'll have your, your tasks that are coming up, right? Maybe you'll have your database health comparison, right? Uh, maybe you'll have product updates. So it just depending on how you want to um, how you want to use command during that time. And again, you can turn all of these back on at any moment. You can hit apply, and it's all back to where it was. So that's the first thing. Um, very neat, very easy to use, um, and again, customizable to to each individual agent. 
Um, the next thing I wanted to cover, so for anyone that's on Teams, the lead pool is uh, active now. Uh, I was active before, but some of the sometimes leads weren't showing up correctly. But the way that you would look for the leads is that, and I think this account has no contacts on it because it's a training account. Let's see. Um, but while this page loads, um, there is a little button that you can click on and it goes to lead pool. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it goes on here on my other account. Okay. Yeah. So you see this account right here where it says lead pool. Um, if you click on that, or if, if you select your team first, and then you click on lead pool, it'll give you all the leads that were um, acquired over the weekend or whenever they were acquired. Uh, sometimes if you only do leads only, and if you're on a team or you've made a team before or command identifies you as a team, uh, for whatever reason, then and you're, and you're missing leads from your Facebook campaigns, the best way to do that is just to click on lead pool and it will show you all available leads. So, um, cause I know for, for me, I had the issue of, um, looking for, for the leads that I got, uh, and some of them weren't showing up. Only the ones that I was, that have claimed were showing up. Um, so let me just pull up one of the, one of the leads real quick. So with angel, um, so it's unclaimed. Right, and if I just have leads only, it, it won't show this one because it's technically not claimed within the, for a specific team member. Um, so for you to be able to see all the leads and make sure that you're getting all of them, you have to make sure that you click that lead pool. And if it's not letting you click it, just make sure that up here you have your team name selected. So that was the other feature that I wanted to cover. And then let me pull up our commands. Okay. The next one, um, there was a couple of updates done to campaigns. Um, if you haven't visited campaigns, this looks completely different now. Uh, before it was only um, before it was only social posts, I believe, and paid ads, and that's the only two things that you could do. Um, right now, there's there's email, there's direct mail, uh, which you can purchase and have it sent out to um, sent out to a specific neighborhood, uh, as well as mass email from here as well. So again, it reminds you of the five thousand limit that you have. Um, per month, which you can upgrade if you end up emailing more, um, more than you need. So I think one of the, the best features that they added was you can click, so you used to not be able to click and find your leads from your, um, from your, uh, campaigns. So now, um, if you go to campaigns and if you select paid ads, uh, you can see some of the campaigns that I've ran. Um, you can actually click on this button, uh, right here and it'll take you to some of the leads right and this is a good example right so i showed um so it shows 41 leads right here uh but i actually only see eight right but if i click lead pool it'll show me the it'll show me 33 because the other 11 i've already claimed because they've because re i've reached out to them and they've reached out back to me so um so that's a really cool feature because you can see you can click on the amount of leads and it'll take you there and you don't have to go into your contacts and you don't have to manually look for the individual leads. Um, there were some other changes done, like uh, there was a time when the um, the cost per click or the cost per lead um, or any the data wasn't updating right away. It still takes about 24 hours to approve the ad. Um, that has, it's pretty much, it has nothing to do with command. It all goes through Facebook and it takes time for them to approve and validate the advertisement. So, um, it's still going to be like that. So my, my recommendation to you would be if you're wanting to run an ad, um, starting tomorrow, do the ad today, um, submit it today. And then probably by tomorrow morning or tomorrow noon, your ad will get approved. So you can start getting leads, right? This is helpful because if you're wanting to do, um, an open house Facebook ad, right? Then I'd recommend not waiting until Friday or Saturday the morning of to run the ad for the weekend, right? So um, just go ahead and run that since Monday or Tuesday that we can get enough leads um, for that time as well. And as you can see, the, the leads are performing pretty well. Um, getting about what a dollar, now these two didn't do so well, but I wanted to run them through all the way just to see if they picked up at the end. 
but the recommendation that I've gotten from a lot of other people is that if if, if it's not performing within the first two or three days, um, to just scrap it and to just try a different one uh, because they're usually not going to pick pick up that much. But the cost per click is is relatively decent, and um, I think the goal and in, in a good cost per uh, lead would be somewhere under five dollars. I think four dollars. Um, obviously the cheaper the better. Um, but so these are some of the numbers that are being reflected on on the KW pages um, in, in KW command. So um, it's not only specific agents that are having this success, it's a lot of people. As long as you run the, the ad um, and as long as you invest some time and, and make sure that it has the right call to actions or it, it conveys the correct message, then, then these numbers are definitely achievable even when other people are running Facebook ads in the area as well. So, and just make sure that you're um, up to compliance on the Facebook ads, right? You're not posting anything you're not supposed to. Um, just kind of follow the rules, follow the guidelines. And if you have any questions, you can always call into the office and ask um, if this is the correct verbiage or if this is the correct thing that you can put on there. Um, I'm sure anyone would be happy to, to help you with that. So, are there any questions on how to edit the homepage or um, anything on paid social ads? Nothing right nope. now. Thanks, Ivan. Yep. So um, our next one would be smart plans. Um, I know smart plans, uh, sometimes they had the issue of turning off on their own. Um, from, from our understanding, that's been fixed. Um, Smart plans are definitely getting a lot more, um, people are spending more time with them because there's been more time over um, quarantine and people are looking back at their systems. So they're creating um, very in-depth smart plans. Um, and I wanted to kind of run through some of the ones that are already on here. Um, you can always click on, the, on these steps and you can see all of the steps of each smart plan, right? So um, let's take home anniversary, for example. This is a really easy one. Um, it tells you the duration, which will always be in days. It tells you the steps, and it tells you how many touches there is going to be on the home anniversary, right? Uh, again, you have to actually set the home anniversary uh, under each contact, because if you do not, then command will not know what their home anniversary is. Same thing with their birthday, right? If you're running a birthday um, smart plan, and you don't have their birthday in command, then command will not know what their birthday is, right? So it's simple. Um, so what it does is it, it creates a task and then there's a six day delay for a phone call, right? So um, for example, if their, um, if their home anniversary is on the 17th of June, right? On the 10th of June, you'll get a reminder to write a handwritten note um, or it says send a gift or a card to contact first name, last name for their home anniversary on, and it gives you the date, right? We'll say uh, June 17th, uh, whatever, 2019, 2018. Um, then there's a six day delay. And then actually on their anniversary, you'll, um, you'll give them a call uh, congratulating on their home anniversary and saying, hey, you know, do you know it's been three years since you bought your home? You know, time flies and, and you know, are you ready to sell yet? Just kidding. Um, but so there also is quarterly call plan. Um, again, this is super easy. I'd recommend putting almost everyone on this um, as, as part of your 36 touch. So again, um, there is a phone call, then there is a 90 day delay, and then it just repeats itself, right? And the reason why I wanna cover this one specifically is because I wanna let you know how, um, how smart plans work. So if you, uh, if you do a phone call today, Right, and you look 90 days from now, there isn't going to be a task to call um, to call that client. Right, it's to help you. It's to make sure that if you have you know 300 or 400 phone calls on different days, and if you have 20 calls and 30 calls, and you have other tasks mixed in, you don't want to bury some of the more important tasks, right, that you had on your calendar with with phone calls. Right. So what it does is that it won't create the next um, reminder until that day. Right. So if it's phone call today, then there's a 90 day delay and then there is another phone call. Right. So that way you don't have because um, because in theory, this is infinite. Right. That way you don't have uh, phone calls set up until, you know, 2040, 2050. Right. So it's a very simple, uh, very easy way. So if you're wanting to create your own, um, you would click on my smart plans. Uh, this one, this account doesn't have any smart plans, but um, that's not a problem. We can just hit create. 
and we can name it. And let's just do open house follow up, right? We hit apply, and it takes us to the um, to the puzzle puzzle piece screen, right? So uh, let's do um, let's just do let's do phone call. Oh, okay. So um, so these are the different features that you have that are available to you right now, um, as well as the uh, the trigger, um, I guess, I would, catalyst maybe. Um, before they released smart plans, and this is a feature they retracted, but um, before there was a point where you can actually um, automatically trigger some of these smart plans, right? Um, you can trigger it by source, right? So, for example, if you had, um, if you had an open house, right? You can set a, um, let's do. Let's just delete this. You can set a delay, right? Um, of let's just do one day, right? And then you can, you know, follow up phone call. And then you can down here you can put whatever description that you want. Um, and if there's a website associated with that, you can put that there. And then you can also set a due date for yourself, right? So right now, as you can't uh, automatically trigger these to happen, um, I would still build them that way. Just make sure you're entering them in. As fast as uh, you know, as fast as as your system um, works on, and um, but later on, you'll be able to have automatic campaigns, such as um, if you set the source to be Facebook ad, right? You can have um, you can have those uh, leads coming in and being automatically set to a smart plan, right? And it'll start running it. It'll start giving you reminders. Um, you can even have autom uh, automatic text messages. Right, um, you have to have a Twilio account set up. So this is pretty handy. I would start working on these now if you haven't already. Um, not much has been changed to these recently, but I really wanted to go over because I think it's important. The way that it's looked has changed and some of the library uh, features have changed as well. Um, they're constantly working on these. They're constantly adding them. Um, a couple of ones that I think should always be on are the birthday ones for your birthday people um bi-weekly neighborhood nurtures for your hot leads right monthly neighborhood nurtures for your past clients and um and maybe six to 12 months out leads uh, long-term nurtures right these are th the um oh sorry these are different touch programs that you can look through so um, i would definitely take the time and look through all these um, and if you have questions or you don't know how any of this works you can just go to the kelly guide and it will take you through all the steps um, one by one, and if you don't have something set up, it'll it'll help you. Um, it'll take you through the whole process of, of setting everything up, so you don't have to do it one by one. So, are there any questions on smart plans? Yeah, hey Ivan, real quick, this one. Mm -hmm. Any um, idea when we'll be able to download other agents' um, smart plans? Any? So that's a good question, uh, Ron and. That's definitely something that's been, uh, I guess, teased over the last couple of months. Um, I know the purpose of that being is that uh, you go to like a, a Ben Kenny class, right, or a Chris Forrest class, and then you're like, oh man, I, I like his systems. Uh, what does he do for his 36 touch, right? And then you can, you know, either get it for free or they can have, you know, a donation limit or you can pay for a smart plan. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that's coming soon down the pipeline. We don't have a date you know, okay. set in stone or anything, but um, that's definitely something that they've talked about. I'm assuming there's going to be another little box up here next to the library where you can pull up those those smart plans. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of foresee that happening as um, if coaches have their coaching clients and they want to have specific smart plans for their coaching clients, this would be a very good way of, of providing value um, for your coaching clients. Same thing with um, if you have a donation, you know, KW Kids Cares, um, just any of the other KW donations, um, you can set that and then people can, can purchase those with, with the donation. So uh, let's see, what do I have next on my list? Okay. Okay, so our next one I wanted to cover was opportunities and I'm gonna create a really quick opportunity. Okay, I already have one in here. Okay, 
So with opportunities, um, as you can see, some of the features have changed. Um, it's a little bit more fleshed out. Um, I think they made the little pencil marks a little bit darker so people can see those. Um, there's also a seller profile. Uh, this is how you can see if, if your client has, um, has an app associated with them and if they're on the guide, right? So uh, if they have the app, there should be a uh, green check mark here. Um, so this is a great, uh, this is a great building block for um, when you will be able to assign them to a specific guide and move them through the guide, um, which will communicate with their um, with their KW app. Uh, they also added a discussion feature. So if you're on a team with multiple people and you want to communicate about specific um, transactions or specific discussions without having to go through um, a big group text, uh, you can create a discussion and you can add anyone to this. Um, which I don't have anyone added right now, but you can upload pictures and you can have uh, discussions on specific transactions. Um, if someone needs to go get something, again, this only works if everyone on the team is in command and everyone checks that feature, right? Because if you're the only one on the team using that, then there's gonna be a miscommunication because no one checks the other messages, right? Um, documents, uh, it's pretty much the same. Um, there's not, there's no documents on this one, but uh, it's nothing's changed with documents, offers, nothing's really changed with the offers, commissions, nothing's really changed there. Notes and uh, timeline is a good one. I don't think um, last time, I think last time we did one of these classes was in February. I don't think timeline was here, uh, but I think timeline is very important, especially for um, in terms of tracking the transaction. Uh, you can see uh, when each opportunity was added. Um, you can see when any point of it was um, adjusted. As you can see, last time I, I was in this was March 18th, right? And I changed some of the commissions. Um, I changed the offer. Um, I changed the details. So this will kind of help along with, uh, along with their emails um, to help provide a good timeline of when things happen throughout the transaction. So if, if, if anything pops up, you can always look back here and you have a pretty solid timeline of, um, of the events that happen. So I really don't think there's anything else here to cover. Um, if we go back, sales pipeline is still, um, let's see, sales pipeline is still pretty much the same. Uh, if we look at all opportunities, this was uh, there as well. Uh, sometimes people were looking for, um, specific opportunities that have already been archived or have already been sold. This is how you'd be able to see them. Um, again, you can sort them by, you can show them by however many. You can manage a smart view. In other words, you can have a preset um, smart view. So if you're running you know, 40 or 50 transactions at a time and you only wanna pull up all your pendings or you only wanna pull up all your actives, then you can have a, a specific smart view for that. Oh, because I don't have any filters, right? Yeah, so let's say that you only want you know, your listings that are in the appointment phase, right? That are on this team and that have maybe luxury as a tag. Right, I just spelled that. Right, um, so you can have preset uh, smart views. So this is great if you're managing a lot of transactions. This would be great uh, for your transaction manager. Um, again, you can also click on discussions um, and you can see how many members are talking and what the discussions are. So they're really trying to make it to where um, you're able to run the transaction with your admin or with Marsha and you guys are able to communicate through here as well as with email. And um, that way you, everyone can see where everyone is on the uh, transaction. Again, I think this is very beneficial for very big teams. Um, same thing with like with medium to, to big teams where you have, you know, maybe three or four admins with 10 or 12 agents and they're all doing different things. Um, th this would be very useful for that. So let's look at our next point. So mass uploading of documents. So while I'm here, actually, I'm gonna show you guys mass uploading of documents. Um, I actually do not, let me pull up the other. So with mass uploading of documents, 
Um, it's an amazing feature because before you used to be able to, you used to have to uh, add one document at a time into your command. Um, this will save you a lot of time. So you can still add them manually, right? And you can add them from directly from DocuSign. And I clicked on that. And as you can see, there's a bunch of documents in here. I can pick any of these and add them. Um, you can choose from your custom folders if you have any, or you can choose them from your computer, right? Um, oh. There you go. Okay. Or you can uh, drag and drop them right here and then they'll add them here. So uh, the best, I think, the awesome, most awesome feature I think they've added on here was um, the add multiple files. So what you can do is you can actually just go through and add these um, one by one, or you can add them from um, from DocuSign, right? So if I had the lead-based paint addendum, I can scroll down and I can, for example, put this one there, right? If I general information buyers, uh, I can scroll down and select that one, right? Uh, option receive, I can scroll down and select that one, right? So you can go through and select these and you hit attach and all those documents will be pulled over. So you no longer have to just hit one by one and go through and hit DocuSign, right? And select the specific document um, and then click assign, right? So this is a really awesome feature, um, very quick, very easy. And then if you need to add a comment for Max, um, you can add it here as well. So uh, any questions on, on documents or, um, or on the opportunities? Yep. Okay. Uh, also, um, this isn't some of the new features, but I think a lot of people had this question. Uh, if you wanted to add a specific document that's not here um, for, for whatever reason, uh, so you can hit add item and you can select the name of the document, right? So you can, I'll just put test as name of the document. Uh, you can select document type and you'll be able to see, is it a disclosure? Is it a contract? Is it an inspection? Is it a lender? So if you wanted to add anything specific um, to the transaction that's not already there, let's just say that it's another uh, addendum, right? Additional note, maybe you can write the, you know, a little description for Max, that way he knows what, what's happening. All right, I'll just put a bunch of A's here, and then um, you can manually select the document, right? I don't think it'll let me, uh, don't think it'll let me go through, but let's just, pull a random document from here. I'll just remove it later. Okay, and as you can see down here, um, I just added a test document, an addendum. Um, so if there's anything else that, that needs to be added, that's, this is a great way of doing it. So anyone having any trouble with uploading documents or anything like that? No, we're good. Oh, good, awesome. Um, and also I don't think I can see chat. So if there's anything in chat, um, just, just toss that out, or you can just turn on your microphone and, and let me know. Uh, let's see, okay. So our next feature, um, let's see. You can do, so you can sync your transaction with DocuSign. Um, if, if it's not already synced for whatever reason, I think this feature is more for um, dot loop. If you want any of those features, the best way to, to go would be to Marketplace at the very top right. And this will open up another window. Um, I don't think a lot of people know about this because it's kind of um, out of the way. But it opens up a whole different um, thing for uh, command. So these are different applications. So whenever we, uh, we were uh, talking about command at the beginning of the year, and, and for the majority of last year, we talked about how command would be the iPhone, and then we have different apps, right? So uh, if you'd like to think that the messenger app on your phone that your phone came with, um, you can say that that's context, right? Um, same thing with, uh, let's just say that your notes, your notepad on your phone that came with your phone, that's uh, DocuSign, right? Uh, if for whatever reason you don't want to use that, uh, you can go through and you, as you can see, there's dot loop. Um, there's different features on here that you can go through. Um, some of them are paid, some of them are free, right? Um, again, depending on, um, depending on how you use the specific um, program, right? If you're using the dot loop premium account, there's an associated fee with that. And I'm pretty sure there is one with the base one. Um, if you're using porch, the repair estimate, that one's free, right? Um, if you do transaction management, as you can see, there's the, the four that I talked about, um, insights and operations. There's your, um, there's market center operations, uh, market center financials. Um, with different fees. Uh, I would probably say insights and operations is probably not for the average agent. 
because of market center operations, I think that's more along the lines for the market center. Um, but as um, Keller Williams partners with more third parties that would that sign the uh, data agreement with us that um, will not be using our data, they are able to uh, hook up through an API for um, with command, right? So this one was, um, if you guys remember last time in December, there was the future convention and this was the winner of that one. So uh, it was vlog easy and what it does is that it cuts vlogs for you, right? So you can record a two minute video and then it, it narrows it down and it cuts it and it removes all the ums and the, the times where you didn't say anything, right? It does that automatically for you. Um, again, if you have never done it, you know, any video editing or you don't have the time for it, this would be a great way to start. Um, again, it, it does it automatically, so it's not always going to be perfect. And you can go through and you can read about the, um, you can read about the, uh, the application, right? You can watch a demo, you can take a tour, features, benefits, um, that you can go through and you can see how much it is per year, who the, which role is it for, right? So again, if you're on one of these apps and it doesn't say agent and it says market center leadership, right? Or office support, then it's probably not for the agent, right? So um, I would go through, I would see some of these applications. Um, I know Porch is a really cool one. A lot of people have done Porch. It does um, automatic um, calculations of how much repairs would cost for a specific home. Um, I actually haven't used it, but I'm gonna use it today because I, I, it's something that I need today. But it's gonna be a very cool tool which will help you figure out and help you provide more value to the client. From what I remember, Porch uses local zip code, um quotes what other people paid for the specific repair or the specific feature in the area right so if everyone in the neighborhood spent five thousand uh, dollars you know fixing their ac and um for whatever reason your client got a ten thousand dollar quote right um you can say that well i got all these other quotes let's maybe try someone else or um or tell me more about that why is it ten thousand everyone else you know it was around five thousand right so just different things that you can um you can have more insight into the community and into the um, into the neighborhood and how much things cost, right? So you can provide better value for your clients. So that's a very big feature um, is the marketplace and either here or um, or in paid um, either here or in or in the uh, smart plans will be the uh, the other agent smart plans. So. Just keep an eye out for this. They, they're always adding different things. Sometimes they, they bring it up, sometimes they don't. As you can see, there's um, like 50, 50 things here. So, um, and usually not a lot of people talk about this on this area, and there's really not a lot of videos on here, but um, you can go through these and take a look at them. And if any of them interests you, you can just go ahead and, and either pay for them or if they're free, just go ahead and, and accept them. So let's see, camp, uh, campaign dashboards. Um, was a new feature. I think I already went over it, but I can go over it again. So as you can see, this is way different than what it was before. Usually it would just take you to the paid ads or the social posts. Here you can actually see how many leads you're getting, how much money you've spent, um, what kind of campaigns that you have, um, how much leads are you getting, or how many campaigns do you have on Twitter, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, um, what the engagement is. Um, in terms of comments on, on the posts, um, what the cost per leads, as you can see, these are temporarily uh, disabled, um, but these will get, uh, these were back before. Um, I think these were working this weekend while I was trying to set up another ad, but um, this will give you more insight and more data into your Facebook ads. And that way you can see which Facebook ads are performing better for which ads, right? So maybe uh, buyer targeted uh, face or buyer targeted online ads work better on Instagram, uh, maybe seller targeted um, ads work better on Facebook, right? Um, for you personally, right? I don't know, right? Um, this will be able to tell you that. The way that you structure your ads, the way that you do the text, this will be able to show you how, um, how much money are you spending, right? How many leads are you getting and what the source is, so. And again, there's some quick posts down here. There's some quick training. Um, and there's also a payments feature now which has my credit card. So I didn't mean to show you guys that. But you can go through payments and you can see um, how much money you've spent on these ads. Um, that way you can, uh, because sometimes, right, if, if, the, um, 
if the price for the ad or the budget is $50 and you've ran it for three days and you've only spent $12 and you hit cancel. So Keller Williams doesn't keep the rest of that money, right? It's still credited into your account. So if you do another Facebook ad and you still have $30 in your account, right? It's not going to charge you $50. It'll charge you $20, right? Because you still have money in your account. And right now there's really no easy way of seeing how much money you have in the account. So that's another feature that's going to be coming up pretty shortly. Let's see, what else do we have here? Sneak preview of KWLS2. So let me see where that is. So this feature has been kind of in beta for the longest time. So that's gonna be your KWLS, the way that uh, command and your KW reaches for the listings. And I don't, it might be working on it right now as we speak. So the purpose of having KWLS2 in command is that whenever you're running Facebook ads or you're wanting to do anything that has to do with listing data, it'll be able to pull that data from MLS and automatically insert it into postcards, right? So if you have a listing that's, you know, $250,000, it's a it's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 2,000 square foot house, and you're wanting to, um, okay, so it says no listings with my account but we can do a listing search, no listings in the area. So it looks like they're working on it right now. But, um, oh, there we go. So what it does is that it gives you, um, it gives you that data. And if you're wanting to run the ad or you're wanting to send out the postcard, it'll automatically pull that data for you, right? And if you're wanting to, um, it will also pull the, the main picture of the property for you or whichever picture that you choose, right? So it's no longer having to go into Canva, um, select you know three bedrooms, two bathrooms, make the design, uh, go through, select a picture, make sure the picture is formatted, right? What it does is it pulls um, it pulls all the data for you and it gives you that information as well. And I'm, I guess this would be a um, a prediction, but this might be the, the next MLS that we use um, since it has all of the listings on there. And it also gives you more in-depth um, features. And it looks like it's a lot better formatted for the consumer. Um, as you can see, all the pictures are there. Um, when the open house is, um, if there is a virtual ad or virtual tour, I'm sorry, if there's any links associated with that. But uh, you can see the property description, area and school information. So to me, I think this will be easier for the consumer to look at than whenever you give them a consumer form. Um, cause the consumer form, right. It's one big page and there's details at the bottom, right. There's, um, property description at the top, right. Um, not property description, but property features at the top, right. How many bedrooms, bathrooms, square foot. So it, this would be easier. I think if I was, um, on the consumer end, right. Because what I would do is, you know, what's the, uh, fees and taxes, right. And you can click on that. Um, the, uh, these obviously are not imported. Um, if we click on area and school information. It will give us what the, what the uh, what it, like obviously this is pulling from the MLS, right? Um, it will give you that information as well. Um, it's kind of cool. It gives you the latitude and the longitude. So this is some of the some of the features for KWLS. Um, again, it goes through. It pulls all the information from next door, and the neighborhoods as well. So you can click on Preston Meadows. As you can see, there is one home for sale, um, and it is a rental. All right, there's 39 days in the market. So um, let me zoom out. So that's, it's the same way with the app as well. So what, what it's trying to do is, is make a complete experience for the consumer. And it will be the same as they uh, visit these homes online and as they would visit them through their app. And let me just go to my website really, really quickly. Yeah. Okay, so if we do, um, let's just select whichever neighborhood was on here. It'll pull up Preston Meadows for us, right? It'll show our current location. It'll show, it'll show the neighborhoods that are in the area. Um, this is the updated website as well. So everyone's website should look like this. Um, it looked a little bit different a couple months ago but um, the same features are the same, the same features. Okay. 
so the features, some of the features are the same is what I meant to say. And as you can see, if you go on Zillow, that's not how you spell Zillow, but if we do, um, if we do Preston Meadows here as well, um, it takes me not to Preston Meadows. It takes me somewhere random. Um, but it's basically the exact same view um, for the consumer. So as you can see, there is neighborhoods, um, you know, pinpoints on the map with the price. Uh, we can do beds, or let's just not do for rent. Let's do for sale. Um, we have homes on the right side. Uh, we have homes on the right side on Zillow as well, right? Um, we have the little pinpoints where, where they are on the map. We have the little pinpoints where they are on the map as well. So if you hover over them, they'll give you a small description. If you click on them, they'll give you more information about the house. Uh, same thing here as well. Um, if you click on it, it'll give you more information about the home. Square footage information. Again, there is ask your agent, schedule a video tour. Uh, this is new um, because four months ago, video tours weren't a thing. Now they are. So they've already updated that. And then any moment you can schedule a video tour with, with their agent. It gives you an approximate savings if you were to use Keller Mortgage. Again, more value and then Keller covered as well with, uh, with home insurance. There's home facts about the home, uh, where it is in the neighborhood, um, what locals say. Again, if you, um, if you were on your KW app, is, it's the exact same here as well. So the, uh, the public schools, the private schools, the teacher, the student -to teacher ratios, um, there's a little uh, price movement tool to see how much it would cost to, to if you were to put 12% down and at the right price, what the monthly payment is, uh, what the mortgage will be. And I believe if you move this up, the numbers at the bottom where Keller Mortgage is, they'll change as well, right? Because Keller Mortgage, the mortgage is off of the uh, price, the specific sales price, or the, I'm sorry, the, the mortgage amount. Um, so as the sales price goes up and the down payment stays the same, the loan amount goes up, right? So that's why the uh, Keller mortgage number will go up as well. So there's some views for the home. Um, and then there is more homes to look at. And then there's your information down here. So that's pretty much what, what, the, new, um, what the new features are on the website. Uh, there is nice little uh, tabs up here that were added recently. Um, where they can skip through different parts um, and go through and see see what's uh, if they want to go back to a specific time, right? Um, we can go back to the main page. There's information about the team. Um, there's a mortgage calculator. Uh, you can add that as well. Um, what's up? That's, are there uh, labs uh, command advisors here? Uh, I think yeah, we're almost done. Uh, so you can add your own mortgage calculator on here. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can add uh, testimonials. You can add blogs. Uh, this is the blog I have from, um, what is this called again? So everyone has this um, as part of your, um, as part of being with Keller Williams Homekeeper. Yeah. So these are just quick blogs that you can send to your clients if you find valuable. So you can customize these websites. Um, and you would do that by going to consumer and you would go to agent site pages and then you can configure the site. Um, you, can, you can just click and go to the site from here um, or you can create a new site. So you can add pages on here as well. Um, there's different things that you can flesh out on the website. So it's basically up to you what you wanna do. There's a ton of videos on uh, MyKW if you want anything specific. Again, like the, um, let me pull that up. So like this, this blog or the, um, or the mortgage calculator, right? That's not something that comes with Keller Williams and it's not from Keller Williams. This is actually from uh, mortgagecalculator.com. Um, so you can go through and there's a little API code that you can uh, copy and paste and you can copy and paste it over to your website. And this is what it'll look like. So it's very clean, very nice. Um, again, more value on your website. So um, there's also a download your app at the bottom. So are there any questions on the website? Um, is there anything that's, that's not working? Any concerns with it? I sent you a question, Ivan. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, I don't see chat right now, so. 
I asked if uh, we need to do any update or anything to get all these new features on the website or uh, do we need to do anything about it to get all these cool features? So all of this, um, it, it, it's for everyone, uh, but the individual pages, right? So I think contact us about me and then your team name, um, it's all the same, right? Uh, it's the same for everyone. So, but everything else you have to add on your own, like testimonials page, right? You have to add this on your own as well, right? You mm -hmm. can do this, um, you just have to go through and add the widget, um, add the writer review, right? And then add the, where the um, testimonials will appear. And, um, and you can go ahead and do these. Fun fact, you can actually do these on your own. You don't actually have to have um, your clients run these for you, right? So if you have these uh, reviews on your Zillow, on your realtor.com, uh, you can write them on your client's behalf and just copy and paste the, uh, the review. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. Is, so, and then you can have, there's, hmm? sorry? How many pages we can have on our website? Is that any limitation? Uh, no, you can have as many pages as you like. Um, it's just however much you want to put into it um, with the website is however much. You, again, if, if your website is a big part of your business and you route leads through your website and you have, um, and that's your main goal, you can invest as much time and, as, and make it as custom as you want it. Again, um, within the limitations of command, right? Um, it's not, it's not going to be as custom as if you were to go pay a sales force to, to run and, you know, build you a website or, um, or if you built it from, or if you paid someone to build your custom website. But again, um, this is very good, very clean, um, very easy to use. Right. And it just, uh, it's free to the Keller Williams agent. So, yeah. um, again, uh, I think this will be a lot of work if you were to go out and build this on your own um, mm -hmm. and having it not be a huge part of your business, right? So, Thank but you. again, like I said, um, if you go on MyKW and if you go on Connect and you can, you can type in the search, uh, if you want to do uh, websites, you can type that in there um, as well as on YouTube. I know Marty Miller, um, a couple of other people are also doing um, website tutorials. So it's, it's literally a three minute video you know, like how to add a mortgage calculator to your uh, KW command website, right? And you just follow the video, you do the steps and you're done, right? Very easy, very simple. Um, they'll even give you what, what the codes are. Um, let me see. Yeah, so that, that's what I'd recommend if you wanna have um, anything different. I know there's, there's even more tabs than this. Um, there's, you can add a, um, my featured listings, right? Uh, you can add, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can add a lot more features in this and other, other agents have found uh, cool ways of, of adding more features. So again, it's how much time you want to invest into your website and how uh, fully fleshed out you want it to be. So let's see. Uh, I have a quick question if I may. Sure, good. Um, I have asked this before, but um, I don't think I still have the answer. On a consumer app, I have difficulty just pinpointing an address out. Like if I put, if I start typing the the number of the house, for example, it does not pull, right? It doesn't pull just as you would, for example, in Showtime when you try to schedule a showing. Mm -hmm. Or, or am I doing something wrong? Like it doesn't actually pull the home address if you're searching in particular for one. Sure. Uh, what's the what's the home address? Do you have one that's that's not coming up for you? Um, no, nothing is coming up. <laughs> so, but I can let me see if I can narrow it down. So, <laughs> while while you look for a home, I'm gonna search this one on my app, right? Twenty seven oh eight Browning Drive in Plano. So I'm gonna put twenty seven oh eight. Ten three oh five Embergate, for example. So you said ten three oh five, right? Yes. Embergate. You know how when you schedule through Showtime, you could just start typing the address and it's giving you the homes with that, with that particular number or address. So is the home on the market? Yes, my shoulder, yes. Okay. So let me, so this is 1030. 
a one, right? Uh, one zero three zero five Amber Gate, or you could try a simple one six four one six okay. Plantation. <laughs> one word. So it pulls up on this one, and then let me just try it on the uh, on the app. Because I know um, there was a little bit of, of difficulties pulling specific um, listings on the app, but let me just pull that up. Thank you. Sorry for the trouble. <laughs> so what it does is right now it doesn't actually pull up the specific house. Uh, it pulls up the neighborhood. And um, so that's, I'll, I'll write that down and I'll bring it to Eddie's attention so he can forward it to the region. But on the KWLS, uh, it pulls up the specific listing as you saw on whenever I type it in there. On, right. the, um, on the app, it pulls up the uh, neighborhood and then you have to click on the actual house. So it doesn't take you directly to the house. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely address that with him and then um, we can see if we can get that forwarded over. So. And if I narrow it down, it has a large map with all the homes that are for sale. So it doesn't even zoom into the neighborhood like you're saying, but uh, thank you for addressing that. My other question is, and I'll make it quick. It was on the marketplace. I didn't um, realize how you got there for the marketplace. Uh, for example, photography service. I don't recall how you. So if you go up here, uh, you can click on marketplace. Got right? it. It's right next to the bell. Yes. And right next to your name at the top right. So you can hit hit that and it'll take you to the marketplace. Got Again, um, if you're gonna use this for photography, um, to schedule photography, um, I would recommend reaching out to, to just other agents in the office and seeing which photographer they used because I've never used HomeJab before. So I can't say if it's good or not, but if you reach out to, uh, to other agents in the office that um, have listings and they have a trusted photographer, then maybe you can interview them as well. So, because yes. um, I, I just personally have not used them. So I, I can't really say if they're, if they're good yeah, or not. I, I was just looking for a good photographer and I thought maybe we had mm -hmm. some options. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. again, um, if you're wanting to, uh, if you need a resource or anything, you can always post on our Facebook page. Um, on the KW Plano Agents Facebook page for, you know, any resource or any referral. If you need a photographer or an inspector, you can just post that there and um, agents will be happy to, to give you recommendations and you can call and, and then do your own research and, and figure out which, um, which yeah. service you like. So. Okay, super. Thanks so much. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't really have much else to cover. Um, there is mass export that they added. Um, you can mass export contacts if you select all of them and you just hit export, you can export them out. Um, let's see. Yeah, more website features, more uh, an easier way of using DocuSign, uh, more tools in DocuSign, um, and then more team features with team tags as well. So that's all coming down the pipeline as long as, as long as, as with all the other features that I covered today as well. So uh, are there any questions uh, on this? right now? No? Okay. Well, uh, we have five minutes. Um, we finished up a little bit early. Again, if you have any specific questions, um, I'll be here for another two or three minutes if you guys need anything. Um, 